Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is a quick video, which I say about all, not all of them, but this one I really am going to try and keep it short, about um, Remix from Meta, I guess, or Facebook, or wherever. But it's kind of like a Next.js competitor. Here's some interesting um, things that they do in it um, that's kind of set specifically around how they manage API interaction and getting data from the back end. But uh, what I'm going to try and do is I looked at some of their samples to try to figure out how to just do basic authentication, read data, display it on the screen. And um, A, they use TypeScript in the examples that, they, that I saw. And I kind of wanted to dumb it. I hate to say dumb it down, but I want to kind of simplify it and extract TypeScript out of it. And B, I had to kind of cobble together a series of examples to figure out how to get authentication working. I'll reference the examples and I'll reference all the documentation in the link to the video. Um, but in the end, well, let me just kind of read this. It's a full stack web framework that lets you focus on user interface and work back through web fundamentals to deliver a fast, slick, resilient user experience. Uh, like I said, it's a, to me, it's a lot like, like Next.js. I just started looking into it, so I got to really see what the differences are. But right now, like I said, I'm not making any opinion, just kind of showing you something uh, that you might find interesting. Um, for my backend authentication, of course, I'm going to use Supabase. I have a project that I've set up for another video that I'm going to drop next week. Since the purpose of this isn't really to focus on how to create projects in Supabase, I have videos on how to do that. I just needed some place that I can authenticate into and then I can store some user profile information. So I'm leveraging uh, this project. If you don't know what Supabase is, it's an open source Firebase alternative, um, has the basics that you need for hosting in the cloud. Like I said, I have tons of video. I have a whole playlist on Supabase that I will link below. What we're gonna focus on here is integrating authentication and, uh, and saving some records to the database. So now, before I get to the code, please make sure you like and subscribe. Um, please share my videos with folks. If you have suggestions for the content, please kind of leave a comment below and we'll see what we can do. So let's get to the starter application. So this is the basic application. Please ignore the UI. Um, all, all I'm gonna really allow you to do is be able to log in. Um, I'm gonna show you how to create an account. And then once I am authenticated, I will read a collection out of the database. And just so that you know, that it's only going to work if I am authenticated. If I look at the table that I'm going to look at, you can see that this little, let's see, if I edit my table, you can see that row level security is turned on on this table, so I will not be able to read any data out if I'm not an authenticated user. And we can confirm that by looking, where's my policies? Policies, chargers, select role if authenticated. So you can only access the data if you're authenticated. All right, now let's get to the code. All right, here we are on the code. Um, I'm gonna touch on the highlights of how the pages are kind of laid out in Remix. But like I said, the documentation does it way better. I'm really focused on how to authenticate and the authentication flow. So that's really what I'm gonna cover. Um, but I'll, I'll kind of walk you through how from the top to the bottom. So if we start at index.js, so um, index is my default route. And let's see, what do we do inside of my default route? And so inside of my default route, this is um, my index page. It's got this, let's move this to bugger. It's got this thing called use loader data. And basically loader data is how you pull data back from the server. And what we're going to do in our use loaded data, we're going to try to pull charger information out of the data. That's what it's, the database stores a list of locations and superchargers for um, Tesla. Um, we're going to try to pull that back. And then also I'm pulling back the user ID, not sure why. And so that, that's what user loaded data does. The rest of this stuff is just basic login. I mean, just basic HTML. The interesting thing you'll find here is, is how they use form. So basically form is how I'm triggering, um, calling, basically making API requests. And so this form post, when I click this button, it'll submit a form post, which will make an API request. And the API request for this route will then call what I got up here, this action method that I have created here. This handles the form submit, which destroys the user session, and by default logs the user out of the application. So if the user clicks this submit button, 
I'll talk about it later, but basically I'm trashing my session and redirecting back to the login page. But I'll go into detail more what I'm doing on the session. Uh, the important thing is what's happening when, when the page first launches, the first thing it does is it attempts to do this uh, load date, use loader data. So if I go with my use loader data, this is where the interesting stuff is really starting to happen. I left this comment in from the Remix team, but what we're doing here is we are attempting to see if there's any session. If there's no access, to uh, no access token in the header, that means there's no user, there's no session. And so what I'm saying there, if the session does not have an access token, then save whatever parameters there were and redirect back to this throw redirect will redirect back to the login screen. I have to do a little bit more research on why I'm doing a throw, but this will redirect you back to the login screen. Otherwise, we assume that you actually do have a user. And so the first thing we do here is we pull the um, access token. Yes. We, so we got the session up here, we get the token from the session, and then Superbase has this um, API call that will allow you to get the user by providing it the token. See Superbase auth and then Superbase get users, get the user's details. I'm, I'm providing it with this token. If there's no error here, if no error, then I'm assuming I have a user, and then once again, I'm getting the token from my session. And what this does is if you hover over it, it says it's clear. Overrides JWT on the current client. And then this new session or this new user will be used on any other Superbase client API call, which is what I want. So now I can actually query the data. This is just a normal Superbase query. It's basically select, every, select everything from my chargers table. And then I just return the data. So remember, that's happening when the page is first loading. So if I'm logged in, all the stuff that I just covered happens. If I'm not logged in, then it just throws this redirect and it takes me to the login page. So this is all happening before the page is even rendered. If, the, if this is successful and the page is rendered, then I have data in my chargers data. And right now, I'm just dumping it out in JSON format. Otherwise, I have an error, which I could potentially kind of render the error, but I'm not doing it. But that's kind of what's going on here. Also, all this source code will be available. Okay, so let's move on to um, the next thing. So we, I spoke a lot about the sessions. Let's talk about the sessions in the back. So do I need to go over my, no, my database server? This is just how, normally how I set up my database, and it's just how, how you set up a database. I'm in Superbase, and I'm just getting access to my client by exporting it. So let's hop over to what I'm doing inside of sessions. I'm going to make it abundantly clear to you. I cut and pasted this code directly from this documentation that I have linked here. I read through the documentation. It talks about how they're managing sessions for you, so I'm like, all right. Let me just leverage what they're already giving me. And so what I'm doing is here, I'm creating this cookie called SP token. This create cookie session storage allows for the remix platform to manage all to manage a session for me is really what I'm, what I'm doing here, letting it manage a session for me. And then through these commands of get session, commit session and destroy session, I can manipulate the session as I need. So let's look at what happens inside the login page. So with login, we're following the exact same form as before. Um, use loader data will load data. I don't think I'm loading any data on this page. Let's see. This is my action. Yeah, I'm not loading any data in my loader, so theoretically I can remove it. Actually, let's just remove it so that it's clear for everybody. Let's go back down here. Let's just remove this. We're not using any loader. We're using action data. Action data is what you get back from your post or from making your API request. So what we're doing in this page is I need an email address, I need a password, and then I do my submit here, and my submit will trigger the post, and the post will trigger my action. The other thing I'm doing here is I'm doing a link to redirect to a create account page so you can create account. And then I'm using this action data because I get this use action is this use action data returns data from the post that I'm doing or the API request. And if I get an error back, I'm rendering an error message. So we enter all our UI here in the form. Uh, we enter our information here in the form. We click submit. 
Submit then forces us to execute our action. So let's scroll up here to our action. And in our action, we use this request form to get our form data. So we get our form fields, our, we get our email, we get our password. Log in using the credentials, I spelled credentials wrong. Then T-I-A-L-S. And for this, I'm just using the normal Superbase API call to authenticate a user. And so after the user is authenticated, if I have a user, then create a cookie with the auth token. Like I said, I'm not sure if I want to use the auth token, if that's the right thing to use, but it works. I need to do some additional research. So after, if my login is successful, then I will have a user object. If I don't have a user, then I just return, this could actually just be null. But it, So it'll return a null user and it'll return whatever the error was. And that will show up in my action data. If I do have a user, then I use my get session call. And this will create a new one if one doesn't exist. And so now I have my session. And then on my session, I set my token. I set my access token to be the access token that I got from the user that I just authenticated. And then I redirect back to the index page that I was just talking about. And on the index page, um, I'm passing this new session with the change that I made to it. And so my cookie now is set. The page, I get redirected to the page. And so, like I said, the first time I couldn't, um, it wouldn't authenticate. But this time when, when you make this call to get the cookie, and we look at the session, the session will have the access token. The session will have an access token. So it will go through this whole process of um, getting the user from the access token. It will then set the new super base session to be based on the user that is logged in. And then I execute my query. So that's what the login page is doing. The login page is calling the super base API call, getting the user from a user, it's getting the access token, it's setting the access token in the header, and then it's redirecting to the right page. Now the last part is create, a, create account, which is a little bit different, but it's the same basic flow. So if we go back to the page, it's very similar to login, so we can remove this used loaded data. Um, it has the action data at the top for any errors or information that comes back. We have a form, we have our form post method, so we're capturing all the fields that we need. It, it returns back to the um, login page on a cancel, but otherwise in a submit form, we create the account. And remember when you submit the form, you call your action. And if you scroll up, here's our action. Same process, I get the form. From the form, I get the fields that I need to create my user. I'm just calling the sign out here to make sure that I'm clearing out any, uh, any uh, super base any super base related information for specific users getting cleared out. I probably don't need that, but it's there now. Uh, remember, this is just my first pass at all this, so don't judge me. And then what I'm doing here is I'm set, I'm signing a user in. And so I take the email and password that I got, not signing user in, I'm signing user up. And then off of this, I get the session data. I need the session data to get the token. I get the user that's associated with it, and then I get an error if any error occurred. Let's, let's talk about if an error occurred first. So if an error occurred, we're going to skip all this, and we're just going to drop to the bottom, and we're going to return the error back, and the error will come back as action data. If an error does not occur, then the next thing we do is we're going to insert in our profiles table the first name, last name, email, and all this information about the user. So we'll have that record stored in our profiles table. If there was an error, then we return that error. Otherwise, we move on. All good, all set. And this is where we need to set our um, we need to set our cookies and set our headers again. And so we get the just like we did on the login, we get their session. It'll create one if one doesn't exist. We set the access token, and then we redirect back to our index page. So a lot of like I said, a lot of this was managed for us by remix with this session information, which I have kind of stored in my own little helper, but that made it a lot easier after I spent hours trying to figure this out and I finally read the documentation and then kind of cobbled this together. So now let's see if it actually works. So let's save this um, to run a remix project. Well did I, I didn't even start I didn't even touch on that. Oh let's go to the docs. So getting started is just npx 
create Re React Remix latest, then it just kind of walks you through the steps to naming it and create it very similar to Create React App. I oh, sorry, very similar to how you create a project with Next. And then to actually run this thing, I'm actually running it using the Remix server. And as you as you look through the getting started tutorial, there's different servers you can run it with. I'm running it with the Remix terminal, um, with the Remix server. And so you can just run it using npm run dev. One thing I do want to mention, which is important to note, if you look in my server, DB server, where I'm setting up Superbase, you can see that I'm pulling my data from process env. I have a .env file. They make it clear in the documentation, which I've linked here, that you should only use a .env file um, in development and that you should look at whatever your hosting vendor is. You should look at how they manage variables and adjust your source code um, appropriately. As I said, I included the link to the documentation here so you can read more about it. But the change you need to make to get this to work was if I look in my package, I had to modify my package JSON to tell it when it runs to use dot and config, config to read this information out of the configuration file. So this is an important thing to note and I'll highlight it in the notes along with the video. So that's what I've done. And then if I do npm run dev, um, my application should be running. And so if I look at my application, I have, let's just go through the process of creating an account. So remix superbase one at mail.com remix sb one test account. And we'll just set the password to password. And so it logged me in and then it did this basic query to read some data out of the system. And then I can log out and you can see it redirects back. If I try to go to my root page, it doesn't have a session. So it just redirects me out of there. And then now let's log in. What did I remix? SB1 at mail.com. Hmm, let me see what I created. I can look at my database to see if my users got created correctly. So let's go back to my authentication. It's remix sb1 at mail.com. So that's my user that got created. Now that we're here, we can check our profile table. Let's look at my profiles. And there's my user that got created, remix sb1 test account. So all that back end stuff worked. Now let's, so let me just make sure I can actually log in. Remix s remix. Oh, I put db1, sb1. And so now you can see I'm logged back in and my, I can make my query. Like I said, this was just a quick video to familiarize yourselves with Remix specifically. Like I said, there's other videos on Superbase. This was really about integrating Superbase with Remix. And, you know, I was just getting comfortable with it also in this example. I'll dig into this more and kind of flesh it out, see if there's better ways. You know how it is when you write code the first time you do it. This is probably a better way to do it the second time. But hopefully you found this helpful. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.